Hola, buenas tardes orientadores y orientadoras. Bienvenidos una vez más a De la Ciencia al Bosque. Eh, este jueves tenemos otro invitado, en esta ocasión nuestro primer invitado internacional en el, en el programa. Y por lo tanto, bueno, pues hemos tenido dudas de cómo hacerlo porque la entrevista va a ser en inglés y hemos decidido que vamos a hacerla directamente en inglés. Traduciremos algunas cosas, pero para dar fluidez, pues vamos a eh, mantener la entrevista eh, tal, en, tal como, como venga en inglés y luego, cuando no sea en directo, cuando sea en diferido, pues podréis verla con subtítulos y de esa manera, pues agilizarla un poco. Eh, bueno, detrás, como siempre, está Carlos. Hola, buenas tardes, Carlos. Detrás de las pantallas, ahí tenemos. Muy buenas, Alberto. Con los nervios del día especial, como has dicho, del idioma, de las dificultades técnicas, pero bueno, con sí. ganas, que puede ser un día también muy interesante. Vale, muy bien. Pues muchas gracias. Y al final, como siempre, seguro que tiene alguna pregunta. Esta vez esperamos que haya muchísimas preguntas, porque esta oportunidad de tener aquí a nuestro invitado, pues bueno, lo merece. Vamos a, vamos a ver si podemos todos sacar provecho de ello. Seguro que sí. Si me da tiempo o si hay un momento, saco la pregunta, pero si no, seguro que hay mucho que responder. Así que luego nos vemos. Muy bien. Vale, muy bien. Hasta ahora. Bueno, pues lo dicho, nuestro invitado internacional es Michel Georgiou. Michel Georgiou es el padre de, hasta ahora, el mejor orientador de todos los tiempos francés, Thierry Georgiou. Eh, fue su primer entrenador, eh, ha sido profesor de universidad eh, en la Facultad de Educación Física, después también ha sido profesor de Instituto de Educación Física, Así es entrenador nacional de atletismo, entrenador nacional de orientación, ha creado un método propio que fue el que relanzó a esa generación francesa de Thierry Hugo Georgiou, François Gonon, muchos otros orientadores franceses y dio el salto, la selección francesa, al top mundial con el método de Saint-Étienne, un centro de alto rendimiento que empezó en los años 90 y que de alguna manera revolucionó el mundo de la orientación porque sin tener los medios, nos lo va a contar él, empezó a idear cómo se podía hacer orientación lejos de los bosques nórdicos, donde tenían más oportunidad de hacerlo. Y es todo lo que nos va a contar, todo sobre lo que versa su libro, eh, otros cursos que ha dado aquí en España y hemos tenido la oportunidad de estar. Y, por lo tanto, una gran oportunidad a hablar con, con él. Eh, a partir de ahora, como os he dicho, empezaremos en inglés e eh, intentaremos seguirlo con un inglés eh, fácil, como es, como es el mío, el suyo también porque no es nativo, entonces esperemos que podamos, podáis seguirlo y si no, pues esperar a los subtítulos, ¿vale? Muy bien, pues, eh, good afternoon, Michelle, how are you? I am fine, I am very happy to take the, at your uh, presentation. Okay, I thank have you. only very good memories from uh, my um, training camps in Spain. I remember the first time, uh, thanks uh, Javier Garin and yeah. later with um, Per Sterner and yes. in uh, uh, near Mercia we did a lot of uh, useful training camps. I, yeah, okay. I, I keep a lot of good memories with Spain. Okay, okay. We, keep, we keep a lot of memories also with you in one course that you teach us a lot of things about your methods of San Etienne and simulation training. Uh, I remember, I don't know if it was uh, six or seven years ago, And, oh, like and much more. <laughs> much more. <laughs> okay. <Yes>. Okay. <laughs> okay. Then uh, you are very welcome and thanks a lot for accept this uh, interview to talk about your methods and your book, uh, The Winner Eye. And uh, we can start if if you don't mind talking about the, at the beginning, with the saint Etienne method uh, and how was the idea of uh, uh, create a, a new method about uh, simulation training and to, 
to develop uh, something uh, far away from Nordics with uh, this kind of, of trainings that now everybody knows around the world. Okay, uh, what uh, I should mention is, uh, first of all, uh, I began orienteering very late when I, I was only 20, 35. And I was formerly a um, uh, track and field trainer. And in my club of track and field, we were used to train nearly every day of the week. And when I come for the first time in an orienteering club in Saint Etienne, there was uh, no uh, training only sometimes uh, uh, members were willing to meet together once uh, once a week and only doing uh, transportation for competition but i was very surprised because uh, i found orienteering very interesting and uh, i was willing to to get results because I was mm -hmm. accustomed uh, to uh, in a track and field every day. In Saint Etienne, there was a, there, there is still a very good uh, training uh, athletic club. We so my first competition. Uh, I was very frustrated because uh, I ran very fast, but I didn't find uh, some controls, or I find yes. them with very, very, uh, with a lot of difficulties. So uh, the next step was to uh, read uh, the map better and to run yeah. a little more. Uh, uh, a little less uh, fast. Yeah, okay. Is, uh, it okay. was the first step. Yeah, okay. okay. Then, yeah, then, uh, okay, it's a, it's a nice beginning to, to start the interview because sometimes that happens in orienteering world that people know that run faster than they must to read properly the map, isn't it? Yes, yes, but it's not so easy to read the map uh, because it's um, it needs a lot of time to understand all the uh, difficulties of, of maps, and uh, especially perhaps uh, we will uh, discuss about it uh, to understand. Contours is for me a very uh, important thing, and to understand it very early, uh, even when you are a child, you have to understand this kind of uh, uh, how you have to understand what is written of the map concerning the relief, the uh, ace the downs and the contours, yeah. contours line. Yeah, yeah I, I remember during the course that you teach us uh, that uh, some of the simulation trainings uh, were that you have to, to know that if you were going up or going down, there are a lot of uh, trainings by simulating that you have to know it and it could be uh, very difficult uh, exercises while you are running or while you are at a high speed to to read properly these kind of things. Yes, yes, it's uh, it's a very specific skill in orienteering, and you have to develop it very early. I think. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Okay. Then uh, I think that we can uh, also. Uh, when I introduced you uh, a few minutes ago, I told that uh, that it was 
a, a point where France start to go to the top by the generation of Thierry, Francois, uh, when you were the coach of uh, Saint-Étienne. Yes, 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 because uh, um, in my club, first of all, in my club, I try to uh, train like in athletic, like in a track and field. And um, uh, it was very rare in France to have so many training uh, sessions in a week. Uh, in uh, Scandinavian countries, it is very usual that all big uh, clubs earn, uh, have nearly uh, everyday training. But in France, yeah. it was uh, nearly the first time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so uh, the only difference, because um, the French Federation gave me the opportunity to create an official training uh, camp uh, for every day. So I was sport teacher and uh, the Federation got the money from the Ministry of Sport to, for me to get professional orienting trainer. Uh, yeah. Paul, the Pro, Paul France was the name of the, this new structure. Mm -hmm. But it was no difference uh, for the time, for the um, total time uh, between uh, Saint-Étienne Club and Paul France. Only more money to get training camps abroad in Spain and uh, elsewhere. But uh, the, the core of the method was already existing in the club. Yeah, in uh, yeah, Saint Etienne, yeah, yeah. Nature, yeah. nature orientation was the name. Okay, okay, and I think that it's necessary because uh, you always, in that uh, time when you were professional coach, all the trainers or almost all the trainers were or in forest or or simulation so, uh, in simulation trainings and then i think that it's a lot of work for a coach yes yes i was working uh, <laughs> from morning to the night but, but uh, uh, if you ask how many uh, indoor sessions with simulation where uh, where plan it was two two session per week all mm -hmm. the other sessions were outdoor uh, as um, on my pet terrain but two session a week were with simulation mates mm -hmm. do you do you do you know this already yeah 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 okay yeah, okay, and then we can start uh, talking about some concept of uh, Saint Etienne Paul. Uh, for example, that uh, we, we are going to follow a little script uh, that uh, people can, yes. can watch in the screen. And I don't know, Carlos, if we can watch the, the first one that uh, as we have been talking. Uh, is the center of Saint Etienne with a new method uh, that he has talking about uh, simulation training and the French guys went to the top uh, from this point to to now to nowadays and then in the second in the second we can see a concept that uh, we can analyze now here with you that is direction and speed. Uh, what can you tell us about direction, direction and speed? They are inter interdependent and how do you do you explain this this concept? Yes. What is the problem with orienting is you never know in advance in what direction and what speed you have to use to succeed to find 
the point you are looking for. So uh, the, the point is to uh, decide from the map if mm -hmm. you take a bad decision or you read uh, badly the map, you cannot find the points or the lines. So what is most important is to have a su uh, successful, efficient map reading. And it, yeah. it needs a lot of time to get this capacity. And yeah. uh, with a simulation exercise, you can uh, shorten the time of uh, being uh, good at map reading. Uh, and for the trainer, it's easier to know if you made mistake in reading the map because you are uh, like uh, for on ball or football alongside the, uh, the play, the play terrain and you can uh, check the, the answers of the trainees and look immediately uh, if they uh, have read right or wrong. Yeah. And it's very uh, positive because the feedback is immediate. Um, it's very different from the forest because in the forest, uh, the trainer either is, uh, has good legs and is able to follow the runner, but uh, it's very demanding. <laughs> And uh, you yeah. can do it only with one runner, with one orienter. Uh, fortunately, now with uh, GPS and so on, you can have feedback, but always afterwards. And you have to wait to... It's not like a trainer of football, of handball or gymnastic, uh, who can uh, correct immediately his training. But uh, simulation can get uh, better feedback and uh, uh, shorten the, uh, the, um, the learning of uh, basic map reading. Yeah, 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 it's okay. It's, it's, uh, it's a concept that uh, all orienteers know that they can't uh, run without control, without map reading, but some of them uh, do it. And, and then uh, sometimes it's very, it's a concept that it's, as you have told us, uh, that is very difficult to train this and to instaur it to to put uh, in order all your reading map for running uh, with uh, security. And then here is the concept of, of zero errors, uh, maximum speed. Yes. Yeah, that yes. is, uh, uh, can you explain us about this concept that is very, of full speed, no mistakes that you really tell us also, is the concept that sometimes is easy to understand, but very difficult to applicate to the, to the orienteering. Yes, because it's fundamental, this concept, but uh, you know, Thierry is a good example because uh, his uh, running speed is not so high. Now you, uh, you, you have a lot uh, of uh, runners uh, who are um, running very fast. Uh, but it's now indispensable with uh, spring competition. Uh, but if you look at uh, the best, uh, nearly the best uh, sprinter now, the Belgian runner, um, how is um, his name is the... is running. Si. Uh, uh, how Michel yes. Michel is running under eight minutes, eight minutes uh, for three three kilometers. It's awful because yes. I suppose Thierry. Uh, will be on the 10 minutes ma maximum. 
So mm -hmm. the speed is very important, of course, because it gives you a margin. But it's very difficult to not use this maximal, maximum speed in orienteering. But at this maximum speed, most of runners are doing a lot of, uh, of mistakes. And yeah. you can win a, a faster runner only, but uh, with doing no mistake. Mm -hmm. And it yes. was the strength of Thierry. Uh, he succeeded a lot of uh, winning uh, run without mistake. It's possible to get without mistake because he, he has a so good... Uh, map reading so i think this method of uh, map reading always at every training make you um, get uh, good reading abilities which is useful every in every competition you you yeah. know, you you understand this of course yes Yes, 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 yes. Uh, we know because we also have been training with Thierry here in, in Spain uh, several times. And uh, he always tell us, as you, uh, that it's very important not to lose seconds. Uh, just a, a mistake can be only 10 seconds, but it's the time that uh, maybe a faster runner uh, can do a mistake, and if you have a fluid uh, read mapping, read, uh, read uh, the map, then it is a very big advantage for an orienteer. Okay, and you know, it's so difficult uh, when I was a, a track and field trainer to get 10 seconds on one kilometer with training. It needs a lot of training, of very uh, picking training. And 10 seconds in, uh, in the forest is nothing. If you yeah. don't hesitate, if you don't make mistake, a mistake um, mostly is a lot of time. Uh, even for an uh, elite runner, uh, 10 seconds uh, is, is a small mistake, but uh, after that, you have to run very fast and to take risk uh, again. And risk again means uh, ri risky, risky, risky uh, all the way along. Yeah, 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 okay. Okay, and uh, other concept that we can see in the slide, uh, if we can see the, the slide, uh, Carlos is another concept that is the pilotage. The pilotage is a concept that uh, you tell us in the book, and pilotage is visual pilotage and control directional, because it's like going through the forest, checking the points that are useful for the map reading. And then you, yes. you call pilotage this kind of, of navigation. Yes, you have two kind of uh, pilotage with a compass, but yeah. uh, most of time on uh, on detailed terrain, uh, high level terrain, I very often detailed terrain, and so you have to read the map and to select the map, and the landmarks you use on the map are not the same. Uh, when you are a beginner and when you are a, a high-level uh, runner. And this yeah. uh, kind of reading is, most of time, there is a big difference in reading between the beginner and the high-level uh, about the rhythm of glances. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. uh, a high-level runner is looking at his is glancing at his maps very often uh, on the yeah. example on uh, on the book is not a very difficult terrain but uh, Thierry is looking at his map 
as uh, an average uh, glance every eight seconds. Mm -hmm. And it's very difficult, it's very um, tired some for uh, any human uh, uh, because uh, the muscle of the eyes uh, got um, tiredness. You have to yeah. uh, accustom the muscle of the eyes uh, like uh, muscle of legs for running because yeah. uh, most of runners, uh, when they are tired, they are not no more able to concentrate on the map. At the end of a, a, a course of a competition, everyone become lazy and it's difficult to read the map, not only because the map is difficult to read, but because you are tired and eyes are not accustomed uh, to this kind of uh, work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, so you that, that's need a special. Very... It it needs a special training for this. I uh, in um, simulation training, some exercises are dedicated to have a look every ten seconds, especially exercises like a dummy compass on a small mm -hmm. square of maximum. Uh, 10, um, uh, 20 meters in a, in a, uh, indoor, you can use this kind of exercise because you, uh, you should, you cannot move if you have not read the map. So it, yeah. it compelled you to read the map every 20 meters. It's a good preparation for reading the map in the forest especially now for um, sprint competition because yeah. you have crossroad sometimes a lot of street every 10 or 20 or 50 meters and you have to decide very fast uh, where you have to turn to take a turn or to go straight uh, left or right and uh, simulation training can help a lot for this kind of uh, uh, problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's is a very nice concept that uh, I remember from the course that you have to train your your eye muscles because is something that uh, it can sound strange, but is of course training. It's just training of your eyes muscles and also the tiredness of your of your mind. If you are at the end of a course, uh, as you said it's uh, the brain is lazy because uh, it don't want to to read more and sometimes it, there are many mistakes in the end uh, part of the of the courses and that's if you have been training with simulation training i think that it's a very good very good uh, way to to develop this this skill yes i think it's an accelerator of this capacity because uh, uh, most uh, high-level uh, runners, orienteers, have this kind of uh, possibility, but, but uh, they uh, got it only with years of training on detailed terrains, usually. But with a simulation concept, you can use indoor terrain with a short uh, uh, distance, which compels you to, to read the map. You have to read the map very often and to take decision very often. You have to, do, to be able to anticipate uh, some decision in order to avoid mistakes. Uh, some yeah. mistakes for uh, medium runner are too late to, to um, correct and uh, yeah. the loss of time uh, is so high that you you cannot get a good uh, ranking yeah 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 a good time okay. at the end of the competition yes yeah okay yes we can see in a slide that is uh, a little bit forward uh, that uh, it's a slide where 
we can see the difference between an expert and a normal runner to read the map. Here it's a little bit small, but we can see in the left that is an expert, an elite, and in the right is a non-expert. Uh, can you explain us this uh, slide? Yes. This study is, is coming from uh, Nilsson, who yeah. makes this question very early uh, on the 19, uh, 80 or even 70 years in a b small book uh, that name um, psychology, psychology of Orienting. And mm -hmm. uh, when I, uh, I got this book, I was very impressed by the utility of this study. Uh, this study was made only with runner um, sitting in face of a screen with uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, of two controls in Nordic terrain. It means that uh, this kind of leg needs only uh, nearly straight, uh, straight running. But uh, as mm -hmm. you can see, uh, they have uh, registers uh, what the glance of eyes were looking at, and it's very uh, important the difference between the the two the two image, and it's very it needs a lot of time from going from uh, from one to the other and uh, yeah. now we can uh, uh, with gps and so on and with uh, add uh, webcam uh, i think the future will give uh, much more important information but the the information given in, in the study are still uh, uh, good to to guide uh, the training in orienting, and so uh, what he, he, he Nilsson kept time of the length of the glens too. The length of the glens uh, were not so important between between. Um, uh, beginner and uh, elite, but uh, the points where the elite runner was looking at uh, is very different from uh, from uh, the beginner, and I think he need a lot of time and uh, discussion and. Uh, and taking into account from the, in the different steps from beginner to high level. And uh, perhaps simulation uh, can uh, help uh, to accelerate the, the progress between the first step and the last step. Yeah. Yeah, okay, yes. And other concepts that uh, you have in your book. Uh, in the book of Michel Georgiou, you can find a lot of uh, examples for, for the simulation, simulation training. And all of them with different targets, uh, you can get the, this kind of things that uh, you can obtain from, from simulation. And other concept that you, you tell uh, in your book is, uh, we can see the slide, uh, is the, um, um, the zoom, the dynamic zoom that, it's, that uh, we have been talking about, and also the zero error maximum speed that we have been talking a little bit, but uh, how do you recommend 
to start training for for this concept that uh, zero error and maximum speed. Uh, what can uh, an orienter that could be a star training uh, do for for zero error and maximum speed? How can I start to, to do this this concept? Yes. Uh, so with uh, with the time, I uh, used to to take two two ways of training, two very different ways. The first one, uh, you take the physical side when you you, you are um, uh, preparing a training session you have two ways to enter the session either the physical side either the uh, reading side mm -hmm. so in a, usually in a simulation training i use either first of all the physical either the one day the physical the other day the mental so uh, the physical you have to use a speed it's uh, easy to uh, determine the speed when you are on a stadium like in track and field or inside a, a gymnasium and with uh, sound usual sound and if you have different distance you can uh, attribute a gift to each individual uh, um, a speed yeah. an individual speed you have to respect and you give him a task a reading task to succeed to achieve is the first way so it's a speed which is the first cons constraint mm -hmm. the second way of um, a building a training session a simulation training session is to to give a reading task first yeah and any anyone uh, choose the the speed is able to to succeed the reading uh, uh, task you understand yeah yeah yeah, yeah. the two stack the uh, as a different priority either it's the physical speed to use the maximum if possible and either it's the reading task who, which is a priority yeah 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 that is a very important concept because sometimes uh, it's very normal to train physically apart of technically or simulation training and that uh, you consider that uh, it has to be a global training yes because it's dangerous uh, most of time uh, if you train only physical shape, you can uh, better your running speed. But it yeah. is not the running speed which can uh, be used in the forest. It's even dangerous because you, you feel uh, good, in very good shape, but you are not able to, to read the map uh, efficiently if you use this speed you you can uh, uh, excuse me but uh, my personal example i was a uh, very uh, good endurance runner and when mm -hmm. i train wise like a runner with a lot of uh, uh, interval training with no map reading i feel yeah very good uh, in the starting block for uh, uh, orienteering but i did a lot of mistakes yeah. <laughs> because yeah, i was yeah. 
my, my speed was not useful to find the, the controls. I was not able to read the map at the, this speed and uh, perhaps able, but not uh, efficiently. Uh, yeah. I, I wa well, because I was too, too old. I begin to too old to read the map. And so it's very important to, uh, when you are beginning orienteering to the priority was map reading is to be was reading map reading all the way. And it succeeds with young, young people, this kind of uh, beginning orienteering. Yeah. Succeeding map reading, finding the controls with uh, no hesitation is a key concept, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's clear, and we can see. You told us before that uh, Thierry was not the a very um, very fast runner. We can see in a slide where we can see the times of a uh, three kilometers test, and there were people that here we can see at the in the right part that uh, some guys that are now uh, still uh, we can see there that people that are like yeah. martin bostrom that have uh, eight in that that uh, in that time uh, and now there are also like oyster val osterbro and some of them were very good but we can see in the right part, uh, in the right part, that Thierry was 9.27, I think, yes. And it was yes, yes, uh, yes. more than a minute less, but uh, he was, of course, uh, faster. It was some times ago, because we can see now that also is Frederic Tranchant, that now he is very strong, right. but also, also a very, very good uh, orienteer. And uh, we can we can see with this that the times were uh, very different. And Thierry, it was uh, not a very very fast on track, but uh, he was the best orienteer ever. Like map yes, reading, yes. I guess. Yeah. Yes, but it depends. On, also, the results are depending on on the terrain because if the some terrain needs a lot of speed. And so uh, yeah. Thierry has had less uh, uh, chance to, to win because it was very, uh, between uh, Thierry and Francois Gonon, Francois Gonon is a very speedy runner. But yeah. uh, most of the time, uh, he, he was uh, making mistakes. And I, I don't know if you remember the World Championship in France. Yes, uh, Francois Gonon. Mm. He has a, a best time, a lot of uh, controls, but he did yes. uh, a mistake. Uh, if he, without this mistake, he would have been a world champion. He was yes. in very good uh, physical shape, but very often he, he did a, a time and you know it's strange because Thierry and uh, Francois were uh, are of the same age and were as, uh, at the same school except uh, uh, from the age of uh, 11 to 15 they were in different mm -hmm. college and uh, the sport teacher of the college of uh, Francois uh, got it for cross-country training. And during uh, three or four years, he didn't train uh, in orienteering. And so no. he, di he didn't uh, get the automatism of simulation about mm -hmm. map reading. He is not able to read very often map like uh, Cherry. And perhaps it's a reason why uh, he's not so accurate than Cherry, because he is yeah. very 
faster than theory. And yeah, yeah, another yeah. story about uh, this kind of problem. Uh, mm -hmm. Usually, in the old times, you you have read the time of Fjernstad and Norwegian guys. We were training yes. in the winter in Spain. A lot of yeah. uh, Nor Norway team and Swedish team were training in Spain in the ninety seven seventy eighty. But they were, they don't, uh, they were uh, in Spain only for running under the sun. They were no, they don't, uh, were doing a lot of uh, uh, orienteering. Mm -hmm. uh, the good maps in Spain were arriving uh, later. Uh, and the, one of the, mo the best was uh, Pequerinos. But it yes. was late. It was uh, uh, in 1990, 1990 mm -hmm. when the yes. French team were, was beginning to, to come regularly in Spain in winter. And every day we did a lot of uh, uh, orienteering sessions. <laughs> and the yes. Nordic uh, uh, teams were doing the same after this. Uh, yes. When they know that theory, where uh, we're doing a lot of uh, technical session every day, twice a day, and even uh, night even three. training. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so uh, the essence, the core of orienteering is reading map, yeah. and to know what's in reading maps. What is difficult to uh, when uh, the map is very detailed, how to extract the the good information, your useful information. Yeah. Okay. Okay. You okay. Know, so. no, yeah. 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 Uh, okay. We can follow with the slides um, to see more of them, and we can see that it's uh, the base of your of your book. Uh, about simulation and about uh, La Paul de Saint Etienne, and we can see in the next uh, slide, uh, Carlos is 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 um, about another another concept that uh, you tell us in in your book that is is a very important concept that is the tactical mental route. What have what should uh, an orienteer have in their in his mind or in her mind to to planificate to to know how to to navigate? Uh, here is I translate you that is the mental image of a route planet uh, to the control, including sometimes uh, features, uh, directional changes and speed changes. It's a, a, a very concept uh, that uh, can you explain us about tactical mental route? What uh, should an orienteer have in his or her mind? Yes. Yes, it's a theoretical uh, concept. Because it means you have to choose points what is the difference between a, a um, high level runner? Most of operation of mental operation are automatic in a, uh, for a high level runner. For a mm -hmm. beginner or medium runner, uh, the trainer has to help him to uh, to say it when mm -hmm. you follow uh, a beginner you can when he is doing something uh, which looks uh, strange you have to stop it and ask him uh, why he is doing this uh, why he is taken this direction uh, at a decision point 
is another one as is aware of the uh, different routes uh, decision mm -hmm. points is a point where uh, different routes are available but some runner cannot uh, see the another route and so it's uh, very important to move for a beginner to move only when they have a plan a t tactical mental route a plan uh, uh, why they choose uh, this uh, track uh, or not this uh, other one they it. and yeah uh, the, the first mistake for most of beginner is to run in global direction of the next control without uh, tactical mental route so they have to choose a white point they will they have to see absolutely to see to to prove they they are on the right the route the route they have uh, chosen and mm -hmm. uh, for um, elite it's nearly automatic but sometimes they can have mistake uh, namely when they are fighting with another guy at, at their side and sometimes even elite are sometimes not aware of uh, what they uh, they are uh, uh, directing but they have always in a tactical mental route um, second hand possibility what yeah. is very dangerous is to to follow any uh, anybody anywhere uh, yeah. but uh, elite runners uh, are a very solid uh, possibilities of uh, second on the uh, route yeah yeah it's tactical it, mental route yeah you you know i don't know if it's explained if my book uh, uh useful exercise is to uh you give the map to the runner but and before he's starting is is right on a sheet of pipe what he is willing to do yeah you you, you know and when he come back from the training as he stick to the, his plan or as he failed to stick to his plan of he change his mind and why he change his mind uh, all this kind of exercise um, is useful yeah and mm -hmm. as uh, every technical sport you have to repeat to repeat to repeat uh, a lot of uh, of this kind of uh, exercises technical exercise with map uh, with map reading exercises either in uh, uh, simulation either in the forest it's not used to to do a lot of uh, a lot of uh, running uh, if your uh, head is uh as uh, map reading yeah it's yeah, yeah, like yeah. Uh, uh, in another chapter of my book uh i use um, the concept of calm a your yeah. your brain uh, at the start is a kind of uh, cockpit like a pilot and you reading uh, instrument uh, now as a pilot of uh, uh, of a plane uh, doesn't look at the landscape they look only yeah. on uh, uh, screens and it's yeah. a lot of uh, technical mental is a lot of internal screen you have mm -hmm. chosen from the map and, uh, and the terrain a kind of uh, what 
in your uh, mind screen you have to use it's yes. a, uh, a brain screen like this yeah yeah it's it's necessary to have a plan to have a, a tactical mental route and as you tell uh, it's another concept that uh, you can you can talk about is the calm eye that have uh, different uh, uh, there we can read that is intrinsic factors to the activity and extrinsic factor that are distractions or other runners or, or whatever and training how do you train a uh, calm eye uh, uh, calm eye uh, you get it uh, only with the time uh, usually you need time to be accustomed to the stress of competition but you can shorten shorten this time if you introduce progress uh, uh, at each uh, training session uh, a little bit of what will be uh, stressful in the competition uh, of mm -hmm. course uh, timekeeping but uh, competition with others of everything we uh, which which is risky in the competition when you fall or when you your map is not in good shape or this kind of uh, when you you will arrive at the start of, of competition everything should be like usual it mm -hmm. means that in training session you you have to introduce everything which can happen in competition uh, yes. in competition you should uh, uh, have uh, uh, you should uh, be faced like everything is usual Mm -hmm. It should be, um, how do you call this, um, habits or uh, uh, everything. It's to repeat. We, uh, exactly, like this, everything is should, uh, nothing is unknown. You, yeah. you know it at, at training. So, uh, um, Progressively, training should like a competition, and I, I use very often uh, the same uh, training mm -hmm. Glock that in competi competition with uh, five like light sound tan 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 on every exercises mm -hmm. in order when you. You will be at the start of competition to do not uh, make uh, extra hurt, um, hurt um, beats, not extra yeah. um, uh, fuel in your uh, uh, brain. You you yes. should be calm. It's not easy because you have to introduce it a long time uh, before the competition. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we, it's we uh, can see yeah. it's uh, it's the role of the trainer to introduce all the little bits uh, which will uh, uh, looks like in competition. Yeah, it's it's a, a repeat. It's a, the I, trainer I, yes. in each training session should introduce some. A little part of the competition. Yes. Mm -hmm. Stressful parts of the competition in order to gain time. You you should not uh, wait uh, uh, 100 competition to be uh, in full uh, uh, calm situation. If you use it at training in competition, uh, the competition will uh, uh, like, uh, which should be like uh, training. 
yeah, yeah. It's it's a it's a kind of of training or even easy training. You can't experiment it uh, something new. All under control, I think. Yes. Yes. Yeah, yes. Okay. If you can oh. you use uh, uh, something which will uh, give stress, even yes. in uh, in uh, training and. For example, uh, what uh, it's uh, most important in a training session when you come in a forest uh, that you don't know. The first exercise is, is very important. And usually in a club with comrades and so on, you are um, uh, discussing and uh, not being... Uh, very uh, concentrate on the uh, because it's training but yes uh, uh, you avoid a way to be to get a, uh, a better step for the trainees because uh, the first exercises you don't the map sometimes you don't know the terrain, so it's like a competition and so you do you should have uh, um, you do, you should be like for competition even in training yes training mm -hmm. should be uh, a custom uh, way of accustomed to competition yeah yeah because yeah. if it's... you are kidding at the uh, at the start of the training you will be either you will be kidding at the start of the next competition, either you, you will be stressed. So yes. uh, you are not ready for, for your A's to be uh, efficient for reading the map. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, understood. And uh, we have also uh, another slide that we can see about uh, the speed that you have developed uh, or you have uh, how to run in a competition it's according to the map reading because the stress can uh, do that uh, you go faster than you should and we can see in a, in a slide now that uh, it's a graphic Carlos I don't know if it's is it's okay that uh, here, yes, uh, that uh, I don't know if it is possible. No, no. Uh, another one more. This one, yes, that it's is, a, the, yeah. Can you explain us this? Yes, it's a very old, uh, uh I don't uh, remember where I, I took this from, but yeah, it's uh. The drawback of this uh, uh, this uh, drawing is it looks like uh, running speed is a cruising speed. Yeah. Uh, in fact, you know, you change in orienteering, you change speed very often according to the difficulties of reading of uh, either of the uh, map reading, either of the terrain. So this uh, drawing is not so faithful, but it, mm -hmm. it means uh, everyone has a efficient speed. Yeah. But mm -hmm. according to the difficulty of the task, either the terrain, if you have to to uh, to climb a hill or to to go downhill, uh, downhill is a good example because physically is e most of time it's easier, but you yes. use an extra uh, speed and it's difficult to up downhill, and uh, you cannot respect uh, a cruising speed like on, uh, of the drawing, and so it's very important to make a lot of training with control downhill. Yeah, because yeah. Uh, 
it's a uh, make you uh, uh, map reading ahead of running. And yes. uh, I use uh, this kind of training down in training very often before competition because you don't uh, need to, to use your strength. Uh, and even sometimes I use cars to take the runner from uh, down to up or mm -hmm. uh, walking around uh, uh, a path of a track and downhill the maximum speed possible. But the maximum speed is not uh, available by the legs, but only by the map reading capacities. And so down on, down in, downhill is very useful as a uh, uh, training. Uh, as really yeah. uh, often training. Okay. So the, the okay. drawing you show, he, I think I use it from a Russian old. Uh, <laughs> <I> <laughs> yeah, okay. It, is, it gives an image uh, concept of uh, if you run too fast, uh, you make a mistake. If you run too low, you cannot not uh, win a race. Or you yes. you can only get a bad ranking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is okay. It, okay. And uh, uh, we can we have an, uh, some conclusions. And I have a, a question. Is the first question uh, now? In a few moments, uh, we can open the program to people to ask. You uh, some concept or whatever, uh, okay. but I have the first question, and the first question is in the conclusion is the first uh, we can see here in Spanish uh, that is uh, in the last, I think yeah okay every training with map what do you suggest do you have tell us about simulation training. And uh, what about the training? You you, do you suggest that uh, we have to train every training with map or what? It is uh, my concept of uh, Saint-Etienne training method. Every, uh, it's uh, Paul France, every training was with maps. But uh, another thing, uh, about we don't uh, have spoken is the concept of uh, uh, terrain notebook. Mm -hmm. You have to to uh, to travel and to know every kind of terrain. But with uh, simulation training, you can use maps from uh, all the world. Uh, all the world. And it's important to know what kind of uh, maps you can get before uh, even uh, uh, going to this uh, terrain. Because terrain yeah. are so different in the world. And uh, to be uh, efficient in competition, you have to, to travel a lot, even in the same yeah. uh, country. In Spain or France, you have a lot of different terrains, and you have to to travel to know these terrains. But with uh, simulation training, you can use very strange maps, <laughs> even Japan yeah. or I don't know. But uh, sometimes you get uh, uh, different uh, uh, kind of terrains, and with simulation, you can be used. Uh, to them only with first of all with the maps and then you uh, in France it's diffi it was difficult to go to Nordic terrain and Nordic yeah. terrain is very difficult and you know for Nordic uh, orientals when they come to uh, south of Europe uh, they yeah, got easy. a lot of problem even for them so they yes. have to travel or even to read a lot of uh, a map because in yeah. Nordic terrain 
uh, running strike is the main uh, solution, but uh, it doesn't work in uh, south of Europe. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> okay, okay. Then uh, we can. We are going to to open uh, the program to people that want to to ask you uh, something about okay. your book, about your about your concepts that uh, you have been talking about. And I don't know, Carlos, if uh, ahora hablo, I'm going to speak in Spanish to invite people uh, for asking. Eh, cualquiera que queráis hacer una pregunta, eh, tenéis a Michelle que os puede responder si queréis aprovechar este, este espacio y las podéis hacer en castellano, ya las traducimos, se lo traducimos y es una oportunidad, o sea que esperamos, no sé Carlos si hay alguna o si también tienes tú alguna después de, de la exposición. De momento Alberto no, no hay ninguna, pero... Eh, damos un momento y yo mientras sí que tengo alguna ya, eh, habéis hablado un poco sobre ello, pero bueno, alguna para profundizar o para alguna aclaración más concisa. Muy bien, pues so, cuando quieras. Michelle, my question was about um, the zero error uh, maximum speed. Uh, do you think that uh, which approach is better, trying to make first... Um, zero error and then going try to increase the speed or try to navigate and to run into the forest as fast as possible and then try to reduce the the, the error uh, you, you are asking is the way or is better to better the speed of theory in the forest no i no. mean I mean, uh, when you're training, when you're preparing a, a, an orienteer, try to to, um, to go uh, as slow as needed, trying to make no mistake, absolutely no mistake, then trying to increase the speed, or is it okay trying to run so fast, even making mistakes, and then like um, making the mistake? No. Yes, I understand your question. It's very important. Uh, my mind uh, idea is no mistake. Uh, you can uh, improve speed only when you you are doing no mistake. The problem with some uh, beginners or medium runner, uh, if uh, you want to get them no mistake. They, they are very slow, but it's, uh, to my mind, it's uh, an intermediate state. If you look on uh, um, some section uh, I, uh, that I presented on the book, uh, when you are with a group, with a club, you have to find controls with some loops, but there is a loop with no control, only tapered route, uh, in order to make them running, uh, to improve running speed. Because with some uh, beginners, uh, they cannot run and, uh, we, uh, and uh, read the map at the same times. And it's very, uh, it's no good for them. They have to, uh, either you put very easy loop, easy control, or uh, the next step is a difficult control, but they cannot run. They, uh, they have to, to walk to find the controls. And so if you in a club, you have to improve the running speed. You can put on the side, uh, on a special part of the map, only a running uh, loop in order to make them improve their, their speed. And uh, so they are improving their, their speed. But what I think 
what is very important and uh, uh, Finnish girl has done a, a study about this with a GPS. She, she has uh, taken time, uh, running speed, time and running speed with GPS around controls. And the difference, the main difference between good runners and high level runners it it is in the area around the control in the last 50 meters in detailed era the difference is very very important and uh, in a world championship uh, most of uh, uh, champions are uh, gain the the race with the difference uh, approaching in the very uh, next and uh, uh, controlled area. Mm -hmm. uh, I, uh, yeah. Do I uh, answer to the question? Yeah, yeah, I, I, I mean, even I think that you, uh, you answer more than I expect, so, so thank you. <laughs> and, uh, so a to... lot of uh, simulation exercises as are uh, the the goal is to uh, is question around the controls how to be very precise in approaching the control uh, because uh, it's very important uh, everyone uh, is uh, slowing down but everyone is not able to understand if the control is uh, 10 meters to the right, 10 meters right, or 10 meters to the left when you are approaching the control with low visibility. Yeah. It's oh, a okay. key concept, I suppose. Yes, 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 for sure. I don't know if uh, there are more questions. No, or... we... No, no tenemos preguntas de momento, es una pena. Ha habido un yeah. problema antes con la conexión y hemos perdido algunas personas, yo creo, porque ahora hay menos personas viendo lo que antes, pero mm -hmm. no tenemos ninguna pregunta. Si no, lo... Ok. Uh, then uh, I have another more question. And uh, it's uh, if uh, you don't mind to... to, to... Uh, to and to hear another question that I have is that uh, how many how many people do you do you know runners that could be um, best orienteers uh, if uh, they uh, had trained or trained uh, more with a map than more in a track. I mean, uh -huh. uh, maybe there are a lot of them that you know that, okay, if you have been uh, training with more with a map, maybe you had uh, been uh, better in tier. tier. I don't know if I, I, you understand me. Yes, I understand. You, you want names. <laughs> Oh, okay, no names, but uh, I think that uh, there are more, not, not names exactly, uh, but uh, uh, you know that uh, there are a lot of people that train in a different way, because they train yes, in yes. track a lot and only two or twice a week with a map or even less. Yes, yes, yes. You know, when I... The former trainer of the French team uh, in the years 1960, it was mm -hmm. nearly forbidden to read the map in winter. They yeah. were doing only a running session and cross country competition because uh, one of these trainers was telling uh, when the competition uh, season is beginning. You should uh, have uh, uh, you should have uh, uh, in need of reading the map. 
Yes. It was a concept. And uh, this concept was not very successful in the French team at this time. Uh, even if the runners were, were very good in running, uh, mm -hmm. uh, were running um, much faster than the, the, the team later. So I understand there is a concept of a simulation uh, may be difficult for some people, some young people, because I remember uh, some young uh, people uh, wanting to begin orienting with me. Uh, it was difficult for for them to not be running at full speed. They were not expensive, and some. Uh, I can uh, tell we're digesting to always being reading maps yeah. and uh, <laughs> having to to be concentrate all the time. And I und and some guys, some young boys, uh, doesn't accept this kind, uh, didn't accept this kind yeah. of training and prefer going yes. to track and field. It's yes, uh, yes. <laughs> I understand this because. Um, I can say this: my training session are always brain brain training, and yeah. some yeah. of young boys or girls doesn't like this. I, I, I had to accept it. I remember yeah. Yeah. I, because I teach orienting when I was sport teacher, and it was for my, for uh, some uh, uh, children it was very regarding because children who were not able to run fast were beating uh, children who were uh, uh, children who were uh, uh, thinking uh, were able to be to find controls better than mm -hmm. uh, boys or girls running very fast so it's, yeah. uh, it was a way to to make this sport uh, uh, rewarding for some, some it's very special orienting yeah 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 very very special and i think that is very tough for a runner to find always with a map because it's very demanding for the brain and and it's tough i yes. think that it's a, a very tough uh, sport if you want to to progress and you want to go to the top yeah Oh yes, okay. but you know, Thierry. Uh, after he was leaving, leaving uh, 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 French team, uh, not French team, uh, uh, the training in Saint Etienne. He, yes. he was nearly doing no, 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 only a running session for him. Is what it was a kind of uh, need to be in the forest. Because when he was in uh, Finland, in Kalevan Rasti, he was nearly mm -hmm. twice or three times a day in the forest. But uh, uh, he, uh, he, he never enjoyed only uh, uh, running, only running session. But yeah, yeah, yeah. because of the first training education, I don't know. Yeah. Maybe because I remember that when he was injured, uh, always uh, he he was reading the map while he was, for example, in the swimming pool recovering, and he also uh, yes. trained uh, with a map. Yeah, and that's that's very tough, of course, but he was the the best. <laughs> then it's yes. it's uh, normal. Yeah. Okay, then uh, we. I think that we are arriving to the finish, and uh, it has been a very pleasure uh, that you accept the interview, and we can see in the in the channel of YouTube. Uh, the we are oh. going to put subtitles, I, I guess, uh, and people can can. And the interview with do you, think, do you think you will you will translate uh, some uh, some parts or you put it on uh, like this i 
I think that it is possible to to put the all the subtitles, uh, Carlos. I think that uh, okay. it could be possible. I think so. Yes, we will try to put English and Spanish subtitles to the full video. Oh, nice, nice. A lot of work for you. Yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, but it's very important your presence here, and uh, we are very proud that you accept the, the interview. And it has been a very nice interview. It's a pleasure to watch it you again after a few years. And, and yeah. I I suggest to the to the audience to read the book because there are a lot of things to do. There are a lot of trainings. There are a lot of a staff to progress in your interim but uh, and i have to i have to thanks a lot uh, the club spanish club malaruta which uh, uh? translates the book yes uh, thanks uh, this club it was possible uh, another way it was not possible too expensive to translate <laughs> yeah 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 okay okay we'll tell them because we well, okay now it's very difficult uh, difficult times to to see people because there are no competition now yes. it's very difficult to compete yes. but we'll we'll tell you if they are watching okay if not we'll suggest them that watch the the program okay okay <laughs> okay thank then you and thank you very much for your work Thank oh, you okay, very much. Okay, we are okay. We are going. Okay, thank you to you. Uh, we are going to. Uh, okay, bye, bye. We are, uh, you can bye. you can wait a little bit. Uh, we are. I'm, I'm going to to say goodbye to the audience, and we can talk uh, now a little bit. Okay, Michel, keep keep in touch. Okay, uh, now. Keep okay. In touch. Thank you very much. Yeah. Okay. Bueno, eh, hemos terminado. Esperábamos alguna noticia, alguna pregunta más. Hemos intentado hacer las más adecuadas a todo esto. Recomendamos la lectura del Ojo Ganador. Como os hemos comentado, Michelle ha sido, pues bueno, todo un pionero en los entrenamientos simulados. Como habéis podido ver, eh, gracias a él, pues el equipo francés dio ese paso a la, a la élite mundial que era tan difícil en un país como, como Francia, del sur de Europa. Y, y bueno, eh, en el Ojo Ganador vienen muchos ejemplos de, de cómo hacer simulados todos estos conceptos que hemos visto en profundidad, ver eh, la táctica del mental root, eh, el Ojo Ganador, el, perdón, el Ojo Calmado, el concepto también muy importante de, de máxima velocidad a error cero, que ha hecho una pregunta Carlos muy interesante, de ver cómo puedo llegar a ello, porque se puede entender, pero muchas veces es complicado. Entonces, bueno, a ver si podemos, eh, en cuanto antes, poner los subtítulos y que podáis ver el, el programa. Y nos despedimos hasta otra otro programa, que todavía es incierto el, el invitado, será en octubre, pero lo iremos anunciando en las redes sociales y os agradecemos pues la, la audiencia y esperemos, esperamos que os haya, os haya gustado. Muchas gracias y nos vemos en la próxima.